Good morning, and welcome to Resurrection Episcopal Church. I'm Mother Leslie Stewart, and we're so happy you could be with us today. You can find everything that you need in our service bulletin, and just follow along there. You can find it on our website, our Facebook page, and at the top of this live post. And whenever you have that, we are ready to begin worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with me. Let us pray. Purify our conscious almighty God by your daily visitation that your son Jesus Christ at his coming may find in us a mansion prepared for himself who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, starting at the first verse. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go, and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 89. We will read it responsibly my whole verse. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. My enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him, and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make my dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. A reading from the book of Romans, chapter 16, starting at the 25th verse. Now to God is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings to made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who has said to have been barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. One time, I found a monk hiding in a monastery laundry room because he didn't want to go to evening prayer. He returned early from a doctor's appointment and didn't want anyone to know. Once, I was disturbed in meditation because a couple of extroverts had gone to the basement to sneak a conversation during grand silence, the hours between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m., when we were all supposed to be quiet in our cells. They had forgotten that on Tuesday nights, the abbot himself taught an hour long silent meditation group. They didn't know eight of us were in there in the cloistered room. It's not like they could hear us. We were being silent. Have you ever seen an abbot get angry? I have. He revealed his presence and broke his silence pretty quick and they ran. I myself tried using the internet or social media to escape the spiritual confines of the monastery. But alas, although they did not take my phone, the monastery in the Sangre de Cristo mountain range of New Mexico has no cell signal, and they turn off the internet during grand silence. They did not put that on the glossy brochure. Listen, no one is a fan of 2020 or of the pandemic, but for some people, some good has come out of it. Introverts love working from home. More time with a spouse and children has been really good for some and challenging for others. This week we learned that we have surpassed a milestone in the pandemic for over 300,000 Americans the worst has happened. But for millions more, the second worst thing has happened. And I am included in that group. I have been left alone with my own inner thoughts. 
In my time in monasteries and silent retreats, I'm, I'm always amazed at the multitude of ways that people, even holy people, will go to to avoid the silence and the stillness and the solitude. And you know what? You know what the three greatest ingredients are for spiritual growth? That's right, you guessed it. Silence and stillness and solitude. In that silence and stillness and solitude, all of the fantasies that I engage in get stripped away. All those things that I create to shield me from the hurtful truths about my life. Any problems that I might have at home or in my relationships get amplified and spotlighted so that I cannot escape looking at them, but I so often want to. My vision of myself and of God gets clarified in those spaces, but often I would prefer to shut my eyes to it, or better yet, distract myself with lots and lots of screens. Are you feeling like that? Has quarantine revealed some things to you? I find myself bumping up against the same age-old problem that I usually do. I want to be closer to God, but also I don't. To be honest, I'm often very afraid of it. Man, you know, you've got to prepare yourself for an encounter like that. You know, I feel like God should give me some sort of warning. You've got to get ready. What might God show me if I get quiet? What might he reveal about himself? What might he tell me? In that exchange, when I meet him in the silence and the stillness and the solitude, what could happen? Sabbatical looms near for me, and I'm really excited about it, but also I have a little bit of wonder and fear. It would be much easier to stay busy here at home than to be alone somewhere else. Mary was alone somewhere, and a messenger of the Lord appeared to her, but she didn't know it at first. You know, scripture tells us that very often angels are described looking like men. And that might explain her reaction. Scripture says she was disturbed and agitated. It loses something in our version that just says that she was perplexed. In the Greek, she was agitated and disturbed. And when you think about it, she was a woman alone and a man shows up and starts talking to her one-on-one -on -one, as if he thought might, he, she might be that kind of woman that he could do that with, which was a cultural no-no. And that time for a man to talk to a woman alone and one-on-one -on -one would be scandalous. The kind of thing you might try with the woman at the well or the woman caught in adultery, but not Mary. It's the kind of thing that you would only do to a woman that you thought was promiscuous to just violate a cultural norm like that. Jesus violated that norm a lot and it's part of the reason why his ministry was so scandalous. And then this strange man says to her, you will conceive and bear a son. No wonder she was concerned about what kind of greeting this might be. She says, how can this be since I have been with no man? According to the Greek, she does not say the word virgin. She says, since I've been with no man. She's asserting a boundary here for this stranger in town. At that point, there were probably about 400 people in Nazareth. She would have known most of them, and they certainly would have known her. And this guy did not know what kind of woman she was, and so she was letting him know. But then he starts to reveal some more information that signals that he's a messenger from God. He says, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The Spirit will literally brood over Mary, like it did over the waters of creation in Genesis. He says, and the child will be holy and will called, be called the Son of God. As an authenticating sign, the messenger reveals things only an angel sent from God could know. He knows the name of her cousin, Elizabeth. He knows that Elizabeth is in her old age, and he knows that she is miraculously with child. This will be the authenticating sign to confirm what he is telling Mary is true. And skipping ahead to what all of this proves, he says, for nothing 
will be impossible with God. Mary says yes. And what she actually says is a little bit closer to the closing of a prayer. She says, amen. She says yes to God's plan when she says, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And let it be is the literal translation of amen. When we pray and we say amen to God, we're saying, let it be. Let it be to me according to God's will. And just like Mary, we have to get to that yes to God. Just as the spirit hovered over the waters of creation, it is that same spirit that hovered over the waters of Mary's womb. It's that same spirit that will hover over us if we let it. God will create again. He will create anew, and this time inside of a person, Mary. Might you let the spirit hover over you? Don't you wonder what will God create in me, in us? The good news is that God does the purification and the creating, but we still have a part to do. Mary had to say yes. She had to give her amen, and we do too, before God will hover over our lives. You know what it's like? It's like preparing for the housekeeper to come, right? You don't just leave everything around as it is and wait for the housekeeper to arrive. No, you straighten up so that they can clean up. We have to prepare. It's the same with God. We demonstrate our intention and our yes by giving what is always the very first act of love, attention. As we enter the season of sabbatical, it is not a vacation. It's a Sabbath, and Sabbath is not about resting in order to do more work. That's not what it's about. It's a time to remember that you are a human being, not a human doing. Take time to just be in God's presence. It's entering into God's rest to give God our attention. We have already accomplished so much and we've been doing and going and serving for several years now, and it's time to rest and recharge and receive more instructions from God's messengers about what is next for our congregation. This is a creative womb-like time where God can hover over us and create anew. When we come back, we already know that there will be some new things. Some things are being birthed, like our new worship space, that chapel at Resurrection Lutheran Church that we're so excited about. I believe that there is so much more ahead for us. We have big things to come in 2021. And when I say big, you'll see what I mean in just a few short weeks. But first, we have to get ready for this encounter with God. We straighten up so that God can clean up. Here is how we will direct our attention over the next 12 weeks of our sabbatical time. The congregation's study will mir mirror my own study while I travel. The details will be outlined in this week's e-news, so please be sure to tune in there. The first thing that we're gonna study is called the Spiritual Disciplines Workbook. It uses an acronym, the acronym of worship, to highlight several different categories of spiritual disciplines. And we'll walk through those. And it's fitting for us to prepare that way in that we are preparing to worship in a new space when we gather again. If you are interested in this book, please contact Shannon at resurrectionplano.org and she will order one for you. And she'll have it sent directly to your house. So it's pretty easy to do. And that way you can follow along with our book discussions. The second book that we'll study is Invitations from God. We wanna have eyes to see God's invitation, what he wants us to say yes to. And it's probably about the start of Lent that we'll study that. So if you're interested in that one, please let Shannon know. And then the third and final book is a more heavily dense theological book, but it's by one of my favorite theologians, Maximus the Confessor. And I love him because he was a mystic somebody who had had a direct encounter with God and what he wrote and what he said helped shape the doctrine, the Christian doctrine for the church. 
And so we're going to be reading on the cosmic mystery of Jesus Christ. For St. Maximus, the confessor, incarnation was salvation. Theologically, it was the divine being taking on and sanctifying all flesh, all creation. And it was also that the incarnation was having Christ birthed in you. That's salvation. That's what this season of Advent and Christmas is all about. Getting ready. Preparing him a room inside of yourself. Straightening up so God can clean up. Mary reminds us that we shouldn't be afraid of such encounters with God or God's messengers. The song that she is known for singing, the Magnificat, is the longest speech by a woman in the New Testament. Her fiery justice song is steeped in Jewish history and scripture, hearkening the stories of women like Miriam, Deborah, and Hannah from the Old Testament. She begins, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Before the Magnificat points to anything else, it points to joy. Specifically, it reminds us that the appropriate response to God's complicated presence in our lives is joy, not fear, not guilt, not penance, not obligation, joy. Indeed, deep and irresistible joy is at the heart of the entire Christmas story. The angel tells Zechariah that joy and gladness will mark John the baptizer's birth. And when Mary arrives at Elizabeth's house, Elizabeth's unborn baby leaps for joy. And when an angel choir announces Jesus' arrival to the shepherds, they describe good news of great joy. Mary's decision to rejoice in response to God is the supreme model of discipleship, the ultimate and highest level of response to God. I pray that you enter the Christmas season and our sabbatical season as a church by responding in the same way that Mary does. Say yes to God. Participate in these studies. Listen carefully to the remarkable speakers that we have lined up for you for the first 12 weeks of the year. Take time for silence and stillness and solitude. Because as Meister Eckhart puts it, we are all meant to be mothers of God. For God is always needing to be born. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed found in your service bulletin saying together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for George, our bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins, saying together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with me. Please extend that peace from this hour table to the tables of your friends and family. Give them a call, send them a text, make their day, and let them know that you are thinking about them in this Advent season as we prepare and we wait. We now have some announcements for you. Hi, friends. Here's your announcements this week. For those who missed the big announcement last week, I just wanted to go over a few more pictures of uh, Resurrection Lutheran Church. We have formed a partnership with them. When we do uh, come back from the time of the COVID separation and we're able to worship again in person, this will be our worship space. Resurrection Lutheran Church, which is on Independence in Park here in Plano. You can see that this little outcropping here, this is their chapel and that's where we will be meeting. Here is the back side of it with the cross on it. You can see that there is an entrance here that takes you back uh, closer to the nursery. When you walk in through the front doors, here are uh, here's a place where the, they view it as a kitty corral for the kiddos. And this is our worship space. When you enter through the main front doors, the uh, if you were to turn right, you would go into the main worship space. But turning left, this will be our chapel for Resurrection Episcopal Church. 
Here's a view of the inside. We're going to make a few changes, uh, like the layout of the pews, but it's a beautiful space with stained glass, real pews, and a solid altar. And we will also have access to a choir room and the nursery. And this is their celebration center where we can uh, come together for our potluck Sundays, our brunch Sunday, and uh, any other like classes that happen during the week. In other news, I'm getting ready to leave for a sabbatical time. Our congregation is entering a sabbatical renewal season. So for the first 12 weeks of the year, uh, this will be your sabbatical pastoral coverage. Father Paul Klitsky and his associate priest, Teresa Terry, will provide that pastoral coverage. Uh, and I will be gone January 1st and will return for Holy Week. You will see them in our worship. They will pop in for about 15 minutes during coffee hour each week. And they are available anytime you need them. Uh, we will be sharing their phone numbers as it gets closer so you know how to reach them. Uh, we're going to have in the e news. A contact list of who to contact uh, for any issue that may come up while I'm gone. But I'm leaving you in excellent hands with Father Paul and Mother Teresa. Our first guest speakers, the first two weeks of January, um, are really wonderful. The Reverend Dr. Jean Stevenson Mesner will be with us January 3rd. She's the Professor of Pastoral Care and Pastoral Theology at SMU Perkins School of Theology. She is wonderful. I received a certificate in pastoral care while I attended SMU uh, for my MDiv, and I'm so glad that she gets to kick off our series uh, taking a sabbatical uh, because it was a thing that she taught me to do to take pastoral rest, to care for myself so that I could continue to care for others. The second week of January will be Reverend Angel um, Scarborough. She is wonderful, and I'm so excited. She's going to be able to talk to you about iconography. We have been setting up and tearing down in an elementary school. Not a whole lot of beauty in that context, although we did the best that we could, uh, and it always made it feel like church. But I'm really glad we get some time before we begin to worship in an actual church, again, with solid walls, that uh, she's going to be able to open up what we would see in different icons and tell you a little bit about her skills. And we have a few more uh, special services coming up. Come home for the holidays. Christmas Eve service is at 6.30 p.m. And you will find that uh, live streamed, premiered on Facebook and on YouTube. Lessons and Carol service is Sunday, December 27th at 10.30 a.m. Lighthouse Church Book Study. Currently, during Advent, we've been studying Incarnation by Adam Hamilton. The next book that we're going to study in the new year is Adele Calhoun's Spiritual Disciplines Handbook. If you would like to participate in that study, we would love to send you a book for free. Contact Shannon and she will send you a copy. Also, if you would like to participate in a book study about it, you can contact Janice Truitt or Meg Muller. Please sign up to be a reader in the new year. That would be a tremendous help uh, while I'm on sabbatical. And uh, you'll get to be part of the service with some rock star lineup speakers. Children's Chapel videos are available on Tuesdays. You can find them on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And our virtual coffee hour happens on Sundays at 930. We can't wait to catch up with you there. And we'll see you soon. As always, we have convenient ways for you to give. You can use the donate button at resurrectionplano.org. You can mail a check to 3609 Stephen Drive, or you can text to give. Send a text to 73256, type in Res Plano and the amount. Thanks so much. And for those of you who have a birthday coming up or in this past week, please know that this birthday prayer and blessing is for you. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, 
which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you have an anniversary coming up, please know that this prayer and blessing is for you. All praise and blessing to you, God of love, source of blessing for married life. All praise to you, for you have created courtship and marriage, joy and gladness, feasting and laughter, pleasure and delight. May your blessing come in full upon them. May they know your presence in their joy and in their sorrows. May they reach old age in the company of friends and come at last to your eternal kingdom. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you and also with me. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death 
We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. If you have been able to come and pick up communion at communion pickup on Saturday, now would be the time to receive that. And to you, I would say the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. And if you were not able to come pick up communion, we have this prayer for spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given to me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. And now let us gather our thoughts of communion, our thoughts of thanksgiving with this post-communion prayer, saying together, Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Please take care of yourselves, take care of one another, enjoy this blessed season of waiting and hoping. And we will see you back here next Sunday at 1030. Thanks so much. Take care.